local people, important issues. CBS 10 WILM's weekly focus on the Lower Cape Fear region. This is Byline Wilmington with your host, Don Enzel. Welcome and good morning. In an election year that made history, New Hanover County also had some game-changing results. Three new leaders were given the nod by county voters. Jonathan Barfield is the first Democrat to serve on the commission since 2002 and only the second African-American on that board since Reconstruction. Republican Jason Thompson is in a unique position, having served on Wilmington City Council before his election to commission. And political newcomer Elizabeth Redenbaugh won her bid for a seat on the New Hanover County School Board and is the only new member elected to that body. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. So let's start off by asking each of you what you think the voters were saying with your respective election wins. And why don't we begin with Commissioner Barfield? You know, Don, working the <coughs> early voting polls, people told me over and over and over again they were looking for change. Um, I heard it said many times, uh, are you an incumbent? My response would be no, we're, we're going to vote for you then. And I think people are really sensing a, a, the county going in a different direction, having a change in leadership, having some new thoughts brought to the table, and that's what we're going to get. So you would say change was, was one of the big uh, movers of your campaign. Uh, Commissioner Thompson, what about you? Well, I'll have to agree with uh, my fellow Commissioner Barfield that change was a big thing. And inside that, I, I heard that they wanted somebody that was uh, truthful and honest and, and would tell them, if you vote for me, this is what you're going to get. And uh, having a track record on the city council for two terms, I believe people understood they would have that for me. And there were those who felt that the county commission had a bit of a, you know, a good old boy system or, or the same old, same old. And, and they, wanted, they wanted the change. They also wanted some, some energy and some enthusiasm. And they felt I could bring that. And I think that's what got me in the office. And Elizabeth, uh, you were the only new uh, member of the uh, New Hanover County School Board to be elected to that board. There were incumbents running who did win re-election. So right. what do you think your election win was saying? Um, several things. I mean, again, just like Jason and Jonathan, change. Uh, I think people wanted you know, new blood on the board. Some of the board members have been there for quite some time, and I think they wanted to see a new face. Um, one of the things that I heard again and again and again, um, I have three children that are in the um, public school system, and that was a huge um, thing for a lot of voters, to actually have someone that's sitting on the board that actually has, has a dog in that fight. And, and then also, too, um, I was very vocal about how I feel about redistricting um, with uh, the concept of neighborhood schools, and it's not something, I mean, obviously, I guess in principle, it's something that I favor, but the reality of what happens uh, with that concept um, is something that I, that I don't approve of or agree with, um, and I think that resonated with a lot of voters, and I heard a lot about that. And we're going to talk about redistricting okay. uh, down the line in the program, but let's mm. talk about board dynamics uh, for a moment. On the New Hanover County Commission, longtime members Bobby Greer and Bill Castor, both Republicans, have been trading off for several years, each serving as either uh, chairman or vice chairman. Obviously, this election was a turning point. Ted Davis is now chair of the commission, and uh, Commissioner Thompson, your vice chair. So how did all of that play out? And why don't we hand that to you, Commissioner Barfield, Please since, do. You, <laughs> since you were the one who did the nominating. How did all that play out? Well realizing that I need to learn the ropes myself and definitely could not serve in either one of those capacities. And I looked at Jason as someone who served on city council, has got a, a great track record there. Looked at Ted, who's been on the board of commissioners for quite a few years and felt like he would be a great person to take the reins and lead us into a new uh, era. And with Jason beside, right beside him, I think we're gonna be great. And the other commissioners fell right in line and they're definitely in, in support of the change that's taking place. Commissioner Thompson, anything to add to that? Well, I mean, you bring up good points. I have to agree what Jonathan said is very accurate. We were unanimous in our decisions for chair and vice chair, and, and I think that's good. When you good. say unanimous, you mean It was a public, five to zero vote. In the public arena. Um, well, obviously, uh, in politics, people, you know, talk and things uh, are, are discussed and asked, but um, the vote, yes, it was unanimous. Uh, I guess that is in the public arena. But, but Because sources have told me that Commissioner Castor actively wanted to be chair this time around. Did he talk to either of you? Commissioner well, you know, that, that happens at the city. That happens with the mayor pro tem position. It happens here with chair and vice chair. It is, a, it is political in that we vote amongst ourselves for who those things get those positions. But, you know, any one of us, and Jonathan is, is 
not 100% uh, correct. He could have served in those capacities and done a good job. Any of us could have done so. It just boils down to the energy, um, the type of leadership that the citizens expressed they wanted, and we, and we made some changes, and you know, we change it every year. So it's not anybody's right to be in this position, and I would suspect that next year probably be some different people in there. Elizabeth, you were just installed on the New Hanover County School Board December 2nd, I think it was. You're exactly right. Yeah. Uh, uh, on some important issues, uh, <clears throat> the board is divided, mm -hmm. and it often breaks down along party lines. Right. Um, you're a Republican, but it's said that you're uh, in tune with the concerns of the Democratic members, particularly on the redistricting issue. That's right. Uh, any comments about that? No, I mean, I, th I think that's actually one of the things that I did hear along the campaign trail. Um, there are a lot of people that would like to see the Board of Education be uh, nonpartisan. Uh, right now it is partisan. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm glad that I can bring to the table um, someone that will look um, at issues, um, you know, n not based upon party lines, but look at both sides and then, and then make a decision based upon the research that I do and the, and the people that I talk with um, and, and educate myself. Have um, you been lobbied uh, by other members of the board about issues? I'm going to ask you who. Um, no. You, no. No one's called you about. I mean, it certainly to talk along, to you about issues. Certainly along the campaign trail. I mean, I felt pressure, you know, from some folks um, on the board. No, not necessarily on the board, but you know. Interests. Interests, yes. Um, to say certain things, I think to be more along party lines, but you know, you, you gotta. I, th I think you have to advocate for the position that you believe in, and, and then you can sleep well at night when you do that. The school board. Uh, voted on November 20th on that controversial redistricting uh, plan. Would you have preferred that they waited until the new board was seated so you could have participated in that vote? Um, I would have loved to have participated in it. Um, I would have loved to have been able to share um, my thoughts on that and then also to be able to share the research that I've done um, and, and, and present that to the public and get that into the public arena. Because um, I think there's an education piece to that, um, that that the public needs, different factors that the public needs to be aware of. Um, I don't think they would have changed the outcome, no. What so. do you think the timing was intentional so that it was, uh, the vote was taken before you? Um, it, yeah, uh, absolutely, yes, you I do. do. Mm -hmm. um, plan's been criticized, as you well know, for uh, not being, uh, adequ or not adequately addressing the problems of schools in high poverty areas. Right. Your thoughts? Oh, I agree. I mean, Johnson Elementary is one. Um, right now, the Snipes Academy is housed there, but Johnson will have its own attendance zone next year. And of that attendance zone, 90% of the children will be will live at or below the poverty level. And if you do your homework, you will find that a high poverty, high minority school like Johnson, uh, or like Johnson will be, are 89 times less likely to be high achieving schools than a school that is, you know, low poverty, low minority. Um, so in that regard, you know, no, I don't agree with that at all. We're going to come back and talk about uh, the A word, annexation with the uh, <laughs> New Hanover County, the two com new commissioners elected to that board when we come back. Stay with us.